I've had the zero turn for over a season now, uh, meaning, well, season meaning a year. Uh, there's uh, 50, maybe 55 hours on the mower, but I did notice the, the cuts getting a little ragged. So it's probably time to sharpen the blades. And I figure if I'm going to do that, I might as well go ahead and uh, grease the, the bearings on the spindles as well on the mower deck. I pulled the deck off the mower and after a closer inspection, I'm not sure these blades are worth saving. I, uh, I bought the mower shortly after buying the property and I was unfamiliar with the terrain. I ran over a lot of stuff I wasn't supposed to run over. Actually, more accurately, I ran over stuff that wasn't supposed to be there. Um, but I ended up beating these blade, blades up pretty good. So I think the, the better way to go here is just to replace them. To take the blades off, I'm going to use this uh, impact driver that I just picked up. I haven't used it yet. I don't know how well it works. And uh, I'm using the standard uh, socket here on the end. That's not impact rated. The uh, extension is impact rated, but uh, the adapter and the socket itself is not. So let's hope it doesn't fly apart, but I am wearing my safety glasses just in case. Just a disclaimer here, I'm not a, an expert in more mechanics or more maintenance. If there's something I don't know how to do, a lot of times I just go to YouTube and try to find a video and learn how to do it that way. But that doesn't mean the person that made the video knew what they were talking about. And they very well may have learned it from someone else that didn't know they were talking about. And then add some of their own information that isn't correct either. And then I'm here doing this, making a video. And I could very well just be compounding the stupid here. It turns out the spindles don't have grease fittings on them, so uh, I've got this one kind of partially disassembled already, uh, taking it to the bench to grease the bearings. And even if there was a grease fitting on the spindle, I'd still take it to the bench to take a look at it because some manufacturers will put a grease fitting on the spindle, but then also use sealed bearings, which is dumb because then all you're doing is filling the cavity between the top bearing and the bottom bearing, but no grease is actually getting into the bearing because it's sealed. Probably the most ideal tool to remove the seal from the bearing is a dental pick. I've got one, but of course I can't find it, so I'm just using the, the point of a utility knife blade to do that. Another tool that would be good here is a grease needle. That way you could get the grease right down into the bearing. I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to apply this on top and then push it down in with my finger. One thing to note is you don't want to way overpack these because the grease will expand when it gets hot and uh, that could dislodge the seal. I'm fairly certain that all these spindles are exactly the same, but just to be safe, I'm taking them off one at a time, lubing them, putting them back where they came. But then the more I think about it, I'm pretty sure that they're exactly the same and it might not actually be a bad idea to rotate them kind of the same way you'd rotate tires on a car just to even out the wear. I went to put this spindle back on and noticed there was something not quite right. It looks like that bearing is sticking up a little bit. It's supposed to be flush so somehow it got pushed out a little when I was doing some work on it so I'm gonna go ahead and pound that back down into place. I'm trying to configure this so that I can get this bearing back in place and I'm actually using the opposite of the old adage which is if it moves and it's not supposed to use duct tape if it's supposed to move and it doesn't use a hammer. Again, this is about 50 hours on the mower, and I realize I'm basically packing new grease in over old grease. Uh, at about probably 200 hours, I'll take these bearings out completely, take the seals off both sides, purge the grease, essentially meaning push grease through one side until all old grease gets pushed out the other side.
removing and installing these spindles is kind of a challenge because I need to be able to reach both sides of the deck at the same time. And because of these uh, anti-scalp wheels on here, it keeps wanting to roll away from me. So if anybody has any ideas on a better way to do that, please let me know. Time for new blades. Hopefully these fit. I think these are uh, MTD and uh, I had re read some reviews for some other blades that I was thinking about getting and apparently there was um, multiple complaints about the blades being the wrong length um, even though they were supposed to be for the Troy built. So I got these I think they're 17 and a quarter or 17 and a half anyway I'm going to try these on here and uh, make sure that there's uh, no interference as these rotate to be sure I got the right ones before I put them on for sure. So looks pretty good. Looks like I got the right blades here. So I'll go ahead and put those on. While I'm putting these blades on, I'm noticing all the, the caked on grass clippings underneath here and uh, realize that uh, I don't clean the deck as much as I should. As a matter of fact, that right there is the clean out port that you'd hook a hose to from the other side. That's actually clogged, which means I don't use it as much as I should, I guess. What I should probably do also, which is something I do with my brush hog, is I spray the underside with the uh, WD-40 Big Blast. I do that for rust prevention, and it's got this uh, big uh, wide nozzle on it, kind of like you'd see for uh, like a wasp and hornet spray, kind of like a fogger. But you get real nice big coverage on it, you can coat the hole underside pretty fast. But I'm thinking too, possibly with a mower deck, if you spray this on, maybe it'll keep the grass clippings from sticking to it also. This is one of the idler pulleys. That there is just a spacer. The bearing is underneath it. And this is actually two halves, and the, uh, the bearing is sandwiched between these two halves of the pulley, and there's a flange on here that partially covers the seal, so I can't get that seal off without drilling out these rivets and taking this apart. And that, that bearing feels pretty good, so I'm just going to put this back on as is, and if I need to replace it later, I think you can buy these pulleys at Tractor Supply for like $12 or something. This deck doesn't have a sticker on it with a, a belt rooting diagram, so I, I made sure to take a, a picture of it with my cell phone before I took it apart, and that way when I put it back together, I know the uh, orientation of the belt. I found out that it's easier to uh, lift the mower back over the deck to hook it back up again, as opposed to trying to slide the deck in sideways underneath the mower. The front is held on in one location uh, via a rod that goes through a hole in a bracket and then secured with a clip. In the back, the deck is held up on each side with these spring-loaded U-shaped retainers. The belt on the left side of the deck needs to be disengaged from the pulley in order to get the belt over the PTO pulley on the back side directly underneath the engine of the mower. And then back to the left side, the, there is a spring tension pulley if you pull enough you can get that uh, belt back over the pulley on the left side and just need to put the covers back over the pulleys and we'll try it out I probably couldn't have picked a worse spot on my lawn to do this test because the grass here doesn't really grow that well uh, but even with that, I can tell there's an issue with the uh, the middle. It doesn't look like the middle blade is cutting at all. You really can't tell from the video, but in person, it's pretty obvious. I'm going to go under and take a look here. And I can see that that belt is not engaged on that pulley. It slipped off when I was hooking everything else up. I should have known something was wrong when I put the belt over that left pulley. It seemed to be a little bit too easy to get it on and you know that's why. And that belt is really hot just from that slipping on the, the shaft of that spindle really created a lot of drag. So now I've got that seated correctly and I'm going to test it out on a on a much better part of the lawn.
So it's obvious now that center blade is now turning and cutting and overall the cut is much better than before. It's a lot cleaner, a lot more consistent. So hopefully I can keep this set of blades in better shape than the others. Okay, you ain't gonna believe this. I was just mowing this area here, which I've mowed, I don't know, two dozen times before. No problems at all. I was going around the perimeter of this tree and something that was partially buried, I guess, kinda, was this. You can see my uh, my new mower blades hit this twice here on this side and on the other side as well. I'm sure this didn't just appear here. I'm sure it was here the whole time and all the times previous I got lucky and just kind of skimmed over it. And this time the wheels hit it just right or, or just wrong in this case and kicked it up into the blades. Of course this couldn't have happened last week when I had the old blades on. Of course not. 